excited about this week to Excellent. learn more about boobs and how I can make them look more voluptuous, <laughs> voluptuous. and contoured. <laughs> All in the game. We are the Thruway Beauties, and this is Dr. Kathleen Morris sitting next to Denise Foy. Oh, yeah. Hey. Um, this week we have a special guest that's going to be joining us. Her name mm -hmm. is Patricia Berg. <laughs> She's going to be talking to us all things boobs and bosoms. I'm really and excited about it. But we have a couple of things that we wanted to bring up before we brought Patricia in mm -hmm. that Joseph Weider is talking about because we do have Dr. Kathleen here and she does it's know true. all things muscles and such. The beauty of your breast depends upon several things. There's your posture, the way that you exercise, their health, and the bra that you buy. Um, breast tissue is soft. There's no bones or muscles to maintain mm -hmm. shape within your breast itself. With great posture, your bosom becomes higher and looks an inch or two larger than it did a moment before. So he challenges us to try it. Measure yourself slouched over and then measure yourself tall and erect and see what the differences are for your breast size. So we're going to do that. Absolutely. Stay tuned. <laughs> How was your week last week? Um, I'm going to have to say this one was an interesting one. I traveled home. So I was gone for three days. So I got four solid workouts in, so I felt pretty good about that. Half the week out the window with nutrition. Oh. Well, I worked out four times a week Yay. this week, so that's good for me. And a consistent four is fantastic. I liked four. Four is a good number. Fantastic four. But that's I'm what you got to remember now. I'm still fighting in my brain, like, i got to do those exercises, <laughs> and I don't want to do them, but I get up and I do them anyway. Do so them anyway. Four is good. Diet-wise, I ate out once, so that's okay, but for some reason, I'm still not losing any weight. I feel like I've hit a plateau of some sort. Just common at this stage of the game. He says, although the breasts have no muscle tissue, their position and contours are dependent on several sets of muscles in the chest, the back, and under the arms. I did not know this. Sure. The muscles mm -hmm. that support the breast start at the collarbone and then they fan out, mm -hmm. outward and downward. The muscles that lift the bust are spread out over the entire upper back. So try to do your bust exercises in the morning when you are fresh and can put real vim, vim in, and vigor. into them. <laughs> vim and vigor. So you don't need to be an anatomy uh, aficionado or somebody who's in the industry um, to get a visual of what we're talking about. Upright uh, posture has to do with all those ab exercises that we're doing, but also the posture that brings our shoulders back and lifts us up. That's back muscles. So, so these muscles here and these muscles here are going to pull the shoulders back and the chest up by tugging, like by lifting backwards, pulling, which all these muscles do. These muscles pull. So pulling, pulling actually brings your breasts out in front. <laughs> now the front muscles, whatever shape they are, and yes they are, they fan and they're, then they're across and etc, etc. But whatever direction they're running in, these muscles here, when stronger, are going to lift up. And anything that lifts up, like a good bra, is going to make your chest look better. So if you kind of think of like your muscles as the base of your bra, <laughs> it makes sense. Playtex, lift and separate. Well, <laughs> Playtex bras, lift and separate. Madonna. But, <laughs> but that's what it is. It's lift and separate. We are proud to have Patricia Berg today as our guest. Patricia is a lactation consultant at 800 Lactate. She knows all things boobs. Joseph Weider talks about the health of your boobs and he says with proper attention to diet, exercise, and good general health habits, fine firm bosom contours can be maintained through most of a woman's adult life. What does diet do for your breast health? Diet takes care of your body's health. It does not do anything specifically for your breast, but it will help your overall well-being. What you eat runs your body. You put garbage in, then you're not going to run your body well. So certainly healthy eating is better for the overall health of your body. Okay. Not breast spe specific, specifically. body specific. Okay. Okay? 
All right. So then he talks about the bra that you buy. And when buying a new bra, be sure to consult the saleswoman for proper fitting. Are there any precautions that we should take when purchasing a new bra? I think it is important to have someone fit you. Most women do not know how to get a well-fitting bra. It is important that bras are not worn 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. The band of the bra goes around the area of your lymphatic system. So if there's too much tension on it, your lymph lymphatic system can't do what it's meant to do, which is help clear toxins out of your body. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That's really interesting. And then are there any disadvantages to having an ill-fitted bra? If you're wearing a bra that is too tight when you are breastfeeding, you can cause the ductal structure to get plugs in it. Because oh. what happens, the ductal structure is very, very tiny. And if you pinch the ductal structure, it's also why we're taught to lift your breast when you put a bra on so that the band underneath does not pinch breast tissue. Mm -hmm. If it's tight in other areas, you can compress the ductal structure, causing the milk not to be able to flow, and then it'll back up and get stuck, comparable to a pea in a straw. <laughs> so let's talk about caring for your breasts during pregnancy. Uh, many women whose breasts were too small for really feminine loveliness before conceiving find that pregnancy greatly enhances their figure afterwards. This is Joseph Reuter's comments. Um, this is because of the glandular development that takes place once conception has occurred. What exactly happens to your breasts when you're pregnant? Why do they get so big? Because you are increasing glandular structure. And I think at this point we should also make a side note that the size of your breast has nothing to do with your ability to produce milk. So he's correct that the breast is going to get larger because it's getting ready for milk production. So you get, in a woman, you're going to get increased glandular development with each menses, and then even more so once you start pregnancy. Oh, okay. I guess I never really thought of it like that before. <laughs> um, he said to increase the bra size by three sizes when you get pregnant. Would you say that that's fairly accurate? Probably. Yeah. It's important. Hmm. Again, because That's you don't want sizes. to put a lot of pressure. Yeah. Huh. Um, what can you advise to those who are um, deciding to breastfeed? I think it's really important to develop your community that will give you support and encouragement. I also think it's important to find and talk to an internationally board certified lactation consultant so that you've developed a relationship if something happens and you have questions and concerns. Because internationally they are the gold standard in terms of their knowledge base about lactation. Yeah. So I had a, my neighbor next door was being rushed to the hospital one day and she was there with her newborn baby and her mother and um, the ambulance was outside and I started panicking and I didn't know what was going on. But she was being carried downstairs. Comes to find out she had an infection in her breast and her temperature went up to 104 degrees, which is quite That's scary. Really serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, what sorts of recommendations do you give for those to prevent that happening? So one them? of the things that, that I would ask in that case is how how old was her baby? A few days old. Yeah. If babies are not latching on properly, they can do damage to the breast and the nipples, which then gives you an opening for infection to come in. In her case, the odds are she picked up that infection in the hospital. And what unfortunately happens is many women are told, it's going to hurt, you're going to have, your nipples are going to be raw. Well, that's a, it's inaccurate, and B, that's your entry for infection. Wow, so it wasn't because she wasn't getting enough milk out of her breast, it was because maybe she caught it in the hospital? She could have caught it in the hospital, or she could, or milk could have been not moving properly, again, because the baby's not latched on properly to be able to move the milk through the breast. And this is why, folks, you need a lactation consultant. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, he also says, if the nipples are tender at first, use pure unscented lanolin on them between nursing periods. What do you think about that suggestion? It's an old suggestion, and unfortunately it has no research to support it. The reality is the Montgomery glands secrete an oil as well as milk to lubricate the nipple and the areola, so it's really not necessary. Good to know. Thank you, Patricia. We appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you for having me. There you go. Well, let's go ahead and get started with let's our exercises. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, here we are. We are in breast and chest week. Just like we talked about in an intro, it's about lift and separate. The first exercise is all about lifting like a bird. We're going to stand in a nice neutral posture. We're going to take a breath in. And we're going to lift up onto our toes and then come back down. Lift up onto our toes and come back down. And we're thinking about being really high and on the toes. We're doing it 20 times. We're always going to have ab exercises and this is a torso twist. So to the best of your ability, you're going to sit on the floor, legs straight and together, arms behind the head. We're going to twist, elbow to knee, twist, elbow to knee. 20 times. Okay, so we talk about lift. This is a lateral lift or a lift to the side. So we're going to cross over in front, come out to shoulder height, cross over in front, come out to shoulder height. 12 times. Swimming. So last week we worked on back arching. We're going to continue with a swimmer's kick. So it's kick, 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 you are going to have an arch in your back when you kick. 15 per leg. It's all about the legs, about the legs. <laughs> Here's our calf exercise. In the past, we've gone up onto the toes for calf exercises. This time, we're going up onto the heels. So give yourself something to support with. We're going to lift the toes up and contract the leg muscles as much as you can, and then come back down. So it's toes up. Contract the leg muscles as much as you can below the knee, and then come back down. We are doing 12. Okay, we are on advanced push-ups now. So we've got dumbbells underneath to, to provide nice arm placement. You don't have to use dumbbells, but you can. It allows for a nice straight downward movement. So it's a basic push-up. Squeeze everything together. Lower, come back up. Lower, come back up. We're doing 12. Okay. So we're going to do a modified bicycle that's safer for your neck than what's in the picture. But the bicycle is the alternating pedal with the bike. And you're just going to do this till you're tired, which could be a very long time. <laughs> All right. We're going to work on the neck again. So hands on the back of the head. This time the head's going forward. Carefully, slowly press up against your hands with light resistance. This is for the back of the neck. Head forward, chin down. Slowly press up against your hands, against resistance. 12. All right, here's my attempt at being a ballet dancer, as all of us are going to be this week. This is the ballet leg, toes to knee, straightened out till parallel to the floor, come back. Parallel to the floor, come back. This one is 20 per leg. So our last exercise is the basic lunge. The basic lunge is a step forward, step back in a very smooth movement. So it is step forward, step back. Step forward, step back. 12 per leg. There was week number seven already. I know. Halfway through the program now, as far as diet's concerned anyway. We are on to the second half. Where diet should no longer be a diet, it should be a lifestyle. Yeah. And for me it is. I don't even really think about it anymore. That's the way it should be. But maybe I need to. That's why I'm not <laughs> losing any weight. <laughs> well, I think about it when I'm not following it. But when I'm actually doing it, I don't think about it. Yeah. And we're going to learn about manicures. Oh, he says it in here. Hands up, lovelier legs. Yeah. No matter what you do, your hands are always in the picture. 
Are yours worth the attention they get? Pretty soft feminine hands are yours for the taking of a few simple precautions every day. An easy to do home manicure once a week. Does it involve eggs? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't read the next week. If it involves all. eggs, eggs I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Maybe it'll give you lovelier, firmer looking Who hands. Who knows? We'll find out. Yeah. Well, join us next, next week. week. We look forward to seeing you then. Bye.